Um, so welcome everybody to our new edition of LTSIG Monthly, um, a monthly webinar series uh, that we envisioned uh, early this year to support teachers on their teaching online endeavors <laughs> this year. Um, and um, today we have Milika Vukedin, who is going to be presenting about synchronous and asynchronous interactive tasks for distance learning. And she has a packed presentation today with lots of ideas. Um, Milika holds a bachelor's degree in education from the Faculty of Education in Jagodina, University of Kragujevac. She is currently writing her master thesis on the topic of environmental education in bilingual preschools. And she also attended an additional master's course for English teaching methodology for young learners. She is currently working on multiple positions, one of them being the head of language studies at the BY Mafit award winning IELTS Center in Nigeria, where she taught more than 2,000 students so far. She has been teaching English and psychology online on Preply for six years now, where she also conducts training for tutors on how to teach children. Milika also facilitates weekly English storytelling and project based learning lessons at the Kutak Zak Kulturu in Novi Sad. Uh, she is a proud National Geographic certified educator and she is very passionate about environmental education. Her other interests include interculturalism, distance learning, and using technologies in education. In her free time, if she ever has some, it's she writes <laughs> academic and semi academic articles for her website, Alice in Methodology. Um, at, in methodology land and for British Council teaching English. She also volunteers online for the Granny Cloud where she has sessions with children from India. So as you can see, Milika is a multi-talented teacher <laughs> and we are very happy to have her here with us today. So without further ado, uh, let's start. Thank you so much. I never expected that you will read my whole bio, but thank you. And I just have to say that it's easy when you're doing a lot of part-time things. So maybe that's another, maybe that's the future of uh, employment and education. So a lot of us is doing a lot of tiny part-time things and making a big, a big change. Maybe that's, maybe that's what I'm trying to do. I don't know. Okay. So welcome everyone. Uh, I wish you a beautiful weekend and I hope that we will all enjoy and just have a little bit of fun today. So uh, this webinar is all about engagement and different activities regardless of the tools you're using. That maybe sounds uh, a little bit unusual since this is learning technologies uh, SIG presentation. But yes, we are going to focus on the activities and the tools can be easily changed. So are we ready to start? Let me see. In the chat box, are you ready? Yay, great, amazing. Oh, we have Tiana, uh, one of my colleagues from Serbia. Welcome again. Okay, so let's start. These are the content, contents of the presentation. So please explore them if you're going to uh, watch the recording or just uh, if you're going to maybe explore the presentation later. So we're going to start right away. Also, I had to add uh, one page with instructions. So if you're going to watch this by yourself, uh, please, uh, if you're going to explore the presentation by yourself, please watch the lesson recording because uh, there is not a lot of text and everything is supposed to be interactive and live. Okay, guys, so let's start. First of all, let's do a concept check in the chat box. Uh, does everybody know the difference between synchronous and asynchronous learning? Ready to rock and roll. Yeah, me too. So let's write in one short sentence or even just one word. What is synchronous and what is asynchronous learning? Let me see what you think and what you know. We're just doing a short concept check. So don't write too much. Let's just mm -hmm. online versus offline. Mm, pretty close, Asma. Pretty close, but 
not entirely true, unfortunately. Tiana was right. Synchronous, real time, asynchronous, and a later time. Yes, synchronous is when you're connected face to face with students. Of course, that is also true when you're teaching face to face in real time. So basically, everybody is in the classroom and it is happening live. And this is exactly what is synchronous learning. For example, this webinar is synchronous learning, synchronous professional development. As you can see, there are a lot of people chatting, talking, doing something. So this is actually synchronous learning. When we go to asynchronous learning, we just add DA and we know it's, it's literally the opposite. So when you are teaching asynchronously, this means that you're not in real time. So you have to use some tools, uh, have to use other activities to engage your students. And usually, uh, personally for me, this works wonders in the low resource communities. For example, if you have students who do not have a good internet connection, if you have students whom you cannot reach so easily at this moment in this emergency remote teaching, so you can try asynchronous learning. We're going to see and give some examples of how that can just work in your classroom. Also, I love asynchronous learning because it can be done both in distance learning, aka online and in face-to-face -face classrooms. So it is very versatile, it's very big, and I think we should explore it more, definitely. Let me check the chat. IATFL6 has lol. Okay, <laughs> great, let's start. So uh, today I'm going to present activities based on various uh, stages of team-based instruction. So. If you're familiar with uh, Joan Shin, uh, the teacher, uh, Joan Shin, and she is a very good teacher and she does a lot of things for National Geographic. Uh, she and Crandall wrote a paper that helps us, uh, wrote a book actually, this is from a very big uh, book, uh, gave us some steps on how can we uh, introduce theme-based instruction. As the title says, it has a certain theme. So we are going to introduce a certain topics, different kinds of topics through English. Now. Oh, why do I use it? It is very easy for me simply because we have six sections. One is warm up, one is presentation after that. Then we go to practice, then we apply, then we do a little bit of assessment in every class, and then we have a follow up. If you're interested to learn more and see the practical detailed steps, you can go to this link. We're going to leave it in the chat box and explore uh, one of my articles. The point is, you can use this and it is created for young learners, but usually, um, I just discussed this with Wiki before the webinar, you can actually use it with adults as well because this is a very nice lesson construction. I love it. It is a very scaffolded uh, way of teaching. In order to do this, you can first select a text or select a team. So you can select a piece of reading and identify the team or a piece of uh, listen, maybe a listening or anything else then you're doing the regular things. So you're identifying the language focus, content objectives, and then learning strategies. So as I said, we are going to focus on some sections of TBI today, but not on all of them because it's very big. We're going to focus on warm up. We're going to do some, I believe, practice because presentation is not that important for us at the point. It's not very interactive. Then we're also going to do some assessment and some follow-up following uh, this instruction. So before we continue, I want to ask you, has anybody used team-based instruction or has anybody used CLIL in their classrooms? They're pretty, pretty connected. Yes, mm -hmm. great, so you're familiar with it, yes. Okay, that's great. Are you teaching adults, teenagers or young learners? Has anybody tried teaching? Mm -hmm. Teenagers with it, young learners, mm -hmm. teens. Mm -hmm. University students, Olenka says, wow, that's amazing. I would like to chat with you about it. I'm very interested to see how it works with, oh, with adolescents. Okay, thank you very much. So this was a very short introduction. As we said, we're not going to discuss a lot of theory or a lot of uh, technical things. Today, we're going to be mentioning some tools. When I say mentioning, I mean, I'm not going to do any technical demonstration. I decided not to do this because of a very important reason and very important times we are in now. As it says here, less is more. Think twice before you start using a tool. Again, I'm going to repeat something that just stuck with me because uh, 
our moderator said it before the <laughs> before the uh, webinar. So as teachers, she said we have a toolkit, and of course we need to select what is good for a certain situation. But we can't keep using the same tool, or we can't use all of the tools. And this is exactly the same with digital tools. So think about it. Is the use of this tool backed up by any kind of effective learning methodology? This is the reason why you're going to just repeat a few tools. Now, all that glitters is not gold. So there are so many tools that appeared in the last three years that are not always useful, I have to be honest. So be careful when you select the tools. And even though I will suggest tools on every page, don't forget, you can change them easily. You can use whatever you want as long as you have an idea what to do. We have some messages. Okay, great, no questions. So we are starting with the warm up. I'm going to explain how does every page look like. So in every page, you're going to see logos. And these logos are the logos of tools that I suggest using for this question, uh, for this task. We're also going to have a question in the end, but before we do, Let's give it a test. So we have two very easy social media inspired tasks. They're very short, very easy. The first one, share something boring about yourself. How do you think that works? Can you write in the chat box? So how do you think we're doing this activity? I'm going to ask you a lot of questions today. So be ready to chat with me. So share something boring about yourself. How do you think this activity actually works? And what do you think about it before we apply it practically? While you think, I'm going to write and I'm going to start sharing one boring activity about myself in the chat box. It's the opposite, yes. Uh, it's the opposite of what teachers normally ask. And this activity, if we click on number one, has been very popular in the past few months. Uh, I think mostly with teens and older students. Mm -hmm. So it's easier to think than of interesting. It's much easier. And then the result is usually uh, a lot of interesting discussions and a lot of fun things. So maybe something that's boring about yourself is interesting to somebody else. Also, you can do it for any content area. What is interesting about this? What is boring about this lesson? So share things about any kind of content, not just about yourself. So let's do it. I'm scared and I'm excited at the same time. I'm going to write a boring fact about myself. So please let's do it as a group and let's write in the chat box. So one boring fact about yourself. I had one, but I forgot it now. Okay, okay, I knew. Mm hmm Okay, I really dislike soup. I really dislike it. I, I would go so far to say that I hate it. You get up very early. Mm hmm Okay. Let's see what others shared. Using contrast color pegs with the laundry. Uh-huh. Oh my God. Okay. Let's scroll down and see what else. You have lived in Barcelona for most of your life. Hmm, that's a great fact. It's interesting to me. Not talking too much. Mm hmm You have to wash your hands with cold water after you brush your teeth. That is not boring at all. That's an amazing fact. I think it's very, very interesting. I have three kids. Great. So personally, I find all of this information about you very, very interesting. And I think it shows your personality and everything. Okay. To be quick, let's go to hashtag activity. So we have Twitter here. And uh, we have uh, a screenshot from Instagram. And Stiana says, yes, having three kids is far from boring. Thank you for sharing all of your amazing, boring uh, facts. So let's do a hashtag activity before we uh, decide are they synchronous or asynchronous. So hashtag, since we don't know each other, uh, and again, you can use this in any content area, but we're going to use it to get to know each other. So write one fact that describes your personality to a person that doesn't know you. So maybe just one adjective, one word, and I'm going to write one. 
I'm going to write one hashtag. Tiana, you're missing a hashtag. Okay, nobody wrote a hashtag. Hashtag energetic. So mine is hashtag ambitious. Everybody's curious. Some are shy, introvert, mm -hmm. creative, mm -hmm. positive. Let's see, what are some other hashtags that describe you? Talkative. Mm -hmm. And I know this is true because, as I said, I know some people here. Optimistic, chatty, creative, legendary. That's amazing. That's just amazing. So we have a legendary teacher here. That's great. Okay. So uh, when I read this, I feel that, yes, I feel that this activity <laughs> neurotic. I'm sorry, but I can't have to keep reading them. Natalia says she's neurotic that we have some hardworking people, amazing. So I think this activity is very good for introvert students. And a lot of students don't like to write a lot. They don't like to speak a lot. So if you're doing a concept check in any kind of uh, subject, this is a very, good, a very good thing to try with them. Okay, and I also use it for social emotional uh, learning. So basically I just want to check their well-being. So how are you feeling today? Hashtag Hmm, excited. So let's do one more. How are you feeling today? Let's see, how are you feeling? And then we're going to see, is it synchronous or asynchronous? Motivated, hungry. <laughs> okay, great, energized. Very good, great. Excited, great. Great. Chris is stressed, I'm sorry. So try to relax here, we're going to do fun things. Okay, so now that we've demonstrated it and you can see that you're engaged and you don't know me, so it, I think it works even best if you know uh, the people in your classroom. So my next question, is this activity synchronous or asynchronous? What do you think? Is it synchronous or asynchronous, these two activities? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Most people say synchronous and only to say asynchronous, which is true. If you click on this button, it says both. Since nobody said, how can we do it asynchronously? I'm going to share a few ideas. So this is very easy to do asynchronously. Yes, you could do it in a WhatsApp group. Okay, so if you use Flipgrid, uh, you can engage your students very easily because on Flipgrid, they can record videos of themselves and share boring facts, put a lot of filters and interesting things, okay? So you can do it through Flipgrid. You can do the hashtag activity, I think literally in every LMS, or you can do it on Padlet. I forgot to add a tool here. So hashtag activity can be done with tools that can serve as visual boards like Padlet or in any LMS. Basically, you're going to make a post, like for example, on Edmodo or Class Dojo. just make a post with a question and ask students to comment. So it can be used in both ways. Use it in a private Instagram with your students. Yes. Yes, Graham. Mm -hmm. What's up and all of these things can be done, can be done, can be used in both, kind, both kinds of questions. And this is why I try to select a lot of activities that can be done uh, both synchronously and asynchronously because I think they are very crucial. This means that you don't have to do double planning. You can do activities, the same activities live and you can leave them in a tool for students who are absent. So I think that's, that's a pro mm -hmm. in a private uh, Facebook group. Yes, you can use it there as well. Okay, now we're going to warm up activity three, which is a web quest. So I'm going to show you how does a web quest work. And as you can see, this one is done ingenially. If you're interested to read more about it, you can click on steps because there is a very long article and I'm not going to bother you with that now. I'm just going to explain what is a web quest if you haven't made it before. If you have, please write what do you think it is in the chat box. So web quest is very similar to a treasure hunt. And also you're going to solve a mystery online. We usually have five parts. As it says here, they are introduction, task, process, resources, evaluation, and conclusion. 
the thing is, uh, the most important thing is that the children, your learners, your students know what you want them to do. Uh, sometimes you're going to have to teach them actually how to, how to navigate a web quest. You're going to have to make a demo maybe. But uh, we're going to uh, test one that I did today and I'm going to need you to write in the chat box. So you're going to guide me through the web quest. Before we start, I just want to tell you that a web quest, uh, I put it in the warm up activities, but you can use it to introduce a topic. You can use it to assess the learners. You can use it to present the topic and also you can use it for practicing. So web quests can be put in every type of activity in every section of the class. And I think they are a very, very, very great, very good activity. We're going to start with the web quest I made for my uh, Granny Cloud children from India. And this is the one I always use because this is the first that I ever made, the first one I ever made. And of course, as you can notice, it's made in Genially. I'm going to share, mm -hmm. yes, Graham sent you a link so you can uh, read more about WebQuest. Okay, so we are now doing the Genially inside of Genially, which is a great tool. So if you're using Genially, you can put another Genially inside every, every button. I think that's amazing. WebQuest, time travel detectives. So we are going to do something connected to time travel. And I use this to introduce a competition. So I didn't want to just tell the children what are they going to do. I used it to make them find, uh, find the competition by themselves. So let's give it a start. First, we have a little bit of rhyming. And I'm going to read it. The day has come when I cannot talk. So I was absent. I couldn't talk with the kids that day. And through this quest alone, you will walk. You'll need to discover the secrets of time. When you find the capsule, you will solve the crime. There is no crime, but anyway, it sounded more mysterious. So when we start, what do we have? This, the, topic of this, uh, the, the topic of the sessions that I have with these children from India is usually digital literacy. So I'm teaching them how to function in the modern world world, how to use computers and things like this. So we have very simple questions here. If I want to search something, I should go to, I mean, that's very easy, but let's find the chat box. Mm -hmm. Yes, Genial inside of Genial is a very cool thing to, to, to test. Yes, the library. Yes, of course, the library. But here we have a digital tool called Google. Okay. The next question says, task one, go to Google and search. What is a time capsule? So when they complete it, there is another task. We're not going to search that now because we are teachers. We know what is a time capsule. Then we're going to the next question. Find a short explanation on any website and select the correct answer below based on what you read. So what is a time capsule? If they click on incorrect, it is just going to prevent them from keep going. When they click on it, they have a discussion. So they should talk a little bit about it and see who got it wrong and who got it right and why. After they complete this little discussion, they have one last question. Again, it's rhyming. A short video you will see. Tell me if you agree. Find a video you will have to rhyme. Uh, be fast and save your time. It runs with cube and starts with you. So we are learning how uh, we're doing some visual literacy, how different websites look like. I think that's important for, for the little ones. We're going to click on YouTube and then we have a password. And as you guessed, the password is YouTube. Wait a second. <laughs> okay. No, what's happening? Oh my God. Give me a second. <laughs> Did I forget my own password? No, I'm using the Serbian keyboard. No, 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 it's not caps. The Serbian keyboard has different Z sounds and so are on different places. So I have to use the other one. Yes, I'm just going to copy paste because my keyboard is using Z. So here it is. Okay, sorry for waiting. Then the kids have to open the video. I'm not going to play it, but I'm just going to tell you what happens next. Uh, the children were supposed to watch this video of me talking and I told them where to go and what to search. 
This group is called Lions. They go to our Padlet and then they search for a post with a time capsule. Then they have to discuss live and do other things. So I am like a teacher, but there is also a teacher with them in the classroom. So it's a very specific learning uh, situation. So it's a live lesson, but I'm not present. So I think it's very, very, very unique in terms of, in terms of uh, the way we did it. And then in the end, when they realize what is, what is a time capsule, they have the task to start making it with their teacher. So in this case, it was a warm up activity. And it's a very specific, uh, as I said, learning situation. But what do you think? Can this be done asynchronously? Can a child do it individually, independently? Or it has to be done live with the help of a teacher? So what do you think? Is it synchronous or asynchronous? What do you think? Mm -hmm. It depends on how you design it, yes. But let's talk specifically about this one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so most of you are right. It is both. You can leave it to a child to do as homework or independent task, or you can do it together in a live class. And it's really easy to make. Mm -hmm. Depends on the age and digital tools kids have. Yes, yes. Yes, this is very important as well. So always use the tools that if you're going to give asynchronous mm -hmm, individual, yes, individual tasks, if you're going to do it like that, then, then you have to present the tool. So they know to use the tool already. So it was easy. Mm -hmm. Yes, very good. Graham has a very good point. So you need to uh, use it synchronously if you're going to discuss with other people, of course. What do you think? Uh, would you be uh, interested to, to try this activity? Yes, yeah, the students can talk to themselves, of course. Would you be willing to try WebQuest to introduce topics in your classroom? Let me know what you think. Totally. Yes. And don't worry, you don't have to have a very complicated design. It can be very simple. It can be a few links. It doesn't have to be anything special in terms of design. So don't, don't think about it too much. Mm -hmm. Yes. Recording your thoughts is easy enough, but is it engaging, especially if the children are going to learn without you? And there are too many videos, we'll send them, we send them already. So doing something and learning uh, and doing a revision of, of tools and things is also is also present. So this is why I like it. Okay, we are 30 minutes into the presentation. We don't have a lot of time, but we're still going to present a few activities. Now we are in the practice section. We have a fishbowl discussion. As you can see here, there's only one tool. I'm going to give you some of the information and then I'm going to ask you to guess how does this activity work? We have time on task 15 to 20 minutes. We have groups three to five inside, remaining class outside of circle. I love this activity. Honestly, I, I really like it, both uh, in face-to-face -face or online classroom. So based on this information, based on the name and this picture blinking here with, with different shapes and sizes, what do you think? How does this activity work? If you have three to five inside, remaining class outside of circle. So there has to be some kind of circle. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, in this case, no, Graham, that's a good idea, but uh, students from India live in a very low resource community, so they cannot do anything. They don't have computers at home. So the only thing that they can do is use it on their phones if, if they borrow from neighbors. Actually, it's a very, very different from us. We, we have a, lo a lot of things in, in Serbia as well, but there are so many kids there that don't have a lot of digital tools except in school. So they can do it only in school. But it's a good idea, yes. You can definitely uh, record, they can definitely record it. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mike says the people outside have fishing rods. Actually, th that's close to the concept of the activity. Mm -hmm. You're fishing out something. And what are you fishing out? I'm going to give you more information now. So. The activity can be done in the online classroom, but I actually adapted it from the face-to-face -face classroom because I love it so much. 
How does it work? I'm going to read it because it, it can sound complicated. Small group of students engages in a peer mediated discussion. Instructor is there, but only if necessary. The other students watch the discussion. So a few of them are going to talk live, blah, blah, blah. The others are going to observe silently, cameras off, everything off, sound off. They're going to take notes. They can critique the content and the logic of the discussion in the chat box. They can communicate. The kids who are watching are not going to read the chat box. They have a task to discuss a topic. Then there is the third group of students, the students who are listening and the students who are reading the interaction that happened in the chat box. So these students are going to observe the discussion and they're also going to scroll to the chat box. They're going to listen and they're going to scroll and see what are other people telling, saying about it and maybe give a constructive feedback. So it's definitely an activity for teenagers. I haven't tried it with young learners. I don't think this is possible to do with them, but I believe this one is amazing. Uh, I've done it as a practice activity and I've also done it with children. Uh, I also done it as an assessment activity. And I think, um, I think it worked better as a practice activity because they discussed uh, with very little information. So they were able to, to just learn more from each other. Okay, so let's see. If you wanted to make this activity, you would need three groups of people. And if we have this kind of break uh, rooms, uh, groups, it's not breakout rooms. Is it a synchronous or asynchronous activity? What do you say? So we have only one tool here mm -hmm. to catch the opinions. Yes, the people outside have fishing rods. Mm -hmm. So this is actually a good idea to do it in the classroom. Give the little kids fishing rods. They can fish. Okay. It's definitely synchronous. Uh, what do you think? Would it be too hard to apply with your uh, teenage learners? I believe when you explain the concept, when you, when you demonstrate, I believe they, they will love it because they will be able to comment on what other people are doing. So what do you think? Is it possible to try uh, this activity online or you would like to do it in the classroom first? Again, the tool doesn't matter. I just put Zoom, but you can use any video conferencing tool. You can use literally anything, as long as you have a camera. You'd prefer, uh-huh. Yes, you'd prefer for this activity to be uh, synchronous. And it is, you can't do it. I, I've tried to think about it, but Yes, you need a couple of tribes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uma says the online attention span seems to be shorter. It has to be adapted. Yes, this is a short activity. So you're not going to spend, I, I never spend more than 15 minutes on it, even less if you need to. It can be a simple discussion. Mm -hmm. Svetlana prefers the real classroom. Okay. I hope you like the idea. I hope you keep it in your mind and try it out sometimes. So we said, it's definitely only synchronous. Okay. Now, we have another practice activity. And I think some of the people here know this because I've used it in, in another training. So you have interactive board games. For this one, I definitely use Genially. You can try to find other tools, but I suggest that you use Genially. How can you use it? Uh, if you're making, uh, if you can't use a template, if you're making one from scratch, and this is a tip I wrote, I think, just find. Uh, find a blank template. Just go to Google and type board game template. This is what I did. I took this blank picture and I made a game out of it. Uh, usually, uh, you can give the link and play it with students in breakout rooms. So you have four players. I put it, uh, I made four, how do we call these little thingies? Oh my God, I can't remember even in Serbian. How do we call, hmm, just can't remember. Yes. So uh, I would like to test it out. Boxes. Oh, it's not boxes. Yes, it's not boxes. It's something similar. Okay. So who would like to give it a go and test this activity with me? I would like to have one person who wants to test it. Okay. Uma, raise her hand. So, uh, 
Okay, so uh, I just have to ask the the uh, co-hosts. Can we give? Uh, can we give uh, Uma was first? Can we give um, the control to Uma because I would need her to control my screen here? Is is that possible? Yes, you but you have to do it because you it. would have to control your screen. Okay, so I can do it. I'm a co-host. I forgot. Yes. So Uma. <laughs> okay, I would also need you to unmute yourself if that is possible. So, I actually have. But, okay, uh, okay. Just so, um, because. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, but I need you to stop touching the screen so I can start the game now. <laughs> okay, so just give me a second. Okay, so we're going to give it a go. Are you ready, Uma? Uh, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's easy. Okay, so this one is called Let's Get to Know Each Other Game. I'm going to select the red flag. Which one do you want? Uh, I'd like to go with the blue one, please. Okay, great. So I'm going to put it on start and then you can put yours. This is brilliant. Oh, uh, thank you. Hang on. Yep. You didn't slide. Okay, click on the rules quickly before we start so you can read it for everybody. Sure. Sure. Oh, sorry, shall I read it? Or? Yes, if you want to. Okay, Just quickly. click on the mm -hmm. dice to roll it. Mm -hmm. Move the flag to, to space, ah, the space, okay, where you should stand according to the dice. Mm -hmm. The star represents a wild card and you will get a random crazy question once you spin the wheel. There okay. are 100 questions in the wheel. Okay, sorry, I think that's enough because we are always uh, out of time. So you can click on X and let's try. Okay, you can do it first, click on it. And you got just one. one. <laughs> okay, okay, go to Okay, so click on this button. And you got a wild card. Click the spin it. Let's see. You're going to get an unusual question. It's not going to be a regular question. <laughs> okay. Oh. Um, Brussels spouts. Brussels spouts. Oh, I hate them. <laughs> okay, so thank you for demonstrating. Uh, I'm going to stop the control of your um, screen on my screen now. Sure. As you can see, it's very, uh, thank you again, Uma. It's very interactive and it's very simple. Uh, you, can let, uh, you can let the students play it by themselves. And based on uh, what we've done, let me just go back. Based on what we've demonstrated now, what do you think? Can it be done? Synchronously, or can it be done asynchronously? And then I'm going to tell you how I managed to use it. Both. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you can do it in both ways. Uh, thank you, Mary Stell. I hope I pronounce your name well. So uh, you can do it in both ways. Yes, but you have to um, you have to have another person to play with. You need at least two players. So I actually shared it with my students and they played it, they played the game with their families. Great. I hope you enjoyed it. I think Uma was especially happy. Now we are getting close to the end and we're quickly going to mention some formative assessment activities. Why not summative? Well, this year I focused more on formative assessment. So I would like to share activities on formative assessment. First of all, the thing that I really like using uh, both synchronously and asynchronously are low stake quizzes and polls. What are low stake quizzes and polls? These quizzes basically have three questions. As you can see here, three questions. This is a screenshot for Edmodo. And you have 40, you have five minutes. You can see 44 submissions. And this is, uh, this is um, kind of a short quiz from a professional development uh, training. So basically 44 teachers decided to do it. It was really short. And the thing is, when you collect all of these, uh, a lot of low stake quizzes, you can make a summative <laughs> assessment. But uh, why, why uh, do we use low stake quizzes? Personally, I use them because students are not stressed. They don't think like they're tested. It's just a little quiz. It's nothing important. It's not scary. So you can do a few questions and just forget about it. So when there's no stress, the results are better. This was an example on um, Edmodo, but I recently started using Typeform because I just like 
uh, the design of the tool. So I suggest it, but you, you don't have to use it. The next one, asynchronous feedback. Personally, I love asynchronous feedback. I just love it. I always use videos. I don't have time to do written feedback. I have a lot of IELTS students, so I really never do it. I start a camera, I read it, I just write a little bit to give them uh, my oral feedback via video. And also, if you're doing this for your class, you can put it on Flipgrid. I like this because then everybody can see the feedback of other people. And I encourage my students, okay, you, th you had a lot of mistakes. Maybe it's a good idea to go and check out the feedback on, on somebody else because you can learn from watching feedbacks on different essays. And finally, sketch note concept check. Another thing that I really enjoy is making sketch notes. Uh, I do it when I go to conferences and I do it uh, with kids in the classroom and usually they like it. What are sketch notes? Uh, basically as teacher is talking or at the end of the class, they should write down basic steps, basic concepts, uh, do some drawings around it, and you can do it online, offline, and in different kinds of tools. Usually when I do it online, I use Padlet because it's really easy to make a mind map on Padlet. When you uh, select, I think, what's the option? One of the options I think is, um, I just can't remember, I'm sorry. So you can do it on Padlet and you can just connect with arrows and just put one central question. And kids usually like it because this way uh, we can organize and then we get a lot of ideas and a lot of information on one concept. Let me just check the messages. There are a lot of them. You prefer no stakes. <laughs> yes, there are a lot of comments. I'm happy that uh, you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any questions, do ask because I think we're going to start a Q&A in a few minutes. I just want to share, uh, I just want to share a uh, few more activities. Chris says, video synchronous feedback on what? On anything. So I give my students feedback on their newspaper design, their game design in Scratch, their essays with, with IELTS students, uh, their videos. So you can give video feedback on anything, depending on the task. This is why I included it. Uh, for this, I use Bandicam because I have a premium version, but you can always use Screenscastify. Maybe somebody can paste the link. Screenscastify is free and you can record up to five minutes. I think this is a great tool for, for everybody. You can install it easily. Uh, thank you, Chris and Uma for questions. Now, I'm just going to say the names of these activities and you can maybe do them uh, explore it later because it is just an example. So in Genially, uh, I do a lot of things in Genially, as you can see, I'm sorry, but I love this tool. So what is follow-up? I think we are all neglecting it and I think it's very important. In follow-up, uh, I usually want to give students a choice. So I give them a choice to guess the content or select it. How do I do it? First, I spy with my little eye. I give them a clue in a certain material and then they can just click around and see what's the topic. This was the Halloween lesson. They were supposed to click around and then when they click here, they're going to see a picture. The topic of the next lesson is connected to fairy tales. We have a castle here. So make something interactive with a lot of things so they can do the I spy with my little eye and just search. I know it's silly, but even teenagers like this doing this. Then interactive voting, of course, we all, uh, we all like to do some voting. I think it's very, very fun. And the last one is choice boards. Again, this is what I do in one of the projects that Vicky mentioned, storytelling. So I let my kids select which book are we going to do next based on this interactive library. Uh, for me, it really doesn't matter what lesson plan I'm going to make. And I want to give them a choice because when they select, they like to, they are more enthusiastic. They, they like to participate in storytelling more. So this is a kind of a choice board. Let me check out your questions. Thank you, you love Genially as well, I love it. Which library is that? That's my library, I made it in Genially. So this is my library of the books I have in my house. <laughs> okay, but you can make anything. Yes, uh, if you want to use some free books, uh, I will send you, there is a link, I, I didn't put it here, but I made a link of free websites with free 
books. So you, you can also make your library from online books. Let me just paste it quickly. So you don't have to pay um, anything. You have to make it, yes. But uh, for example, I made this one from scratch. It's not a template in Genial. So I made it from scratch. You can, you can design whatever you want. Okay. Please ask more questions while you do. I'm just going to demonstrate some activities that are outside of the screen. So as you can see, we have this interactivity beyond the screen, which is my daily calendar. I don't know if you can see it. So it is right here. And I'm going to stop sharing because I want you to see it. I want you to look at my camera. So I did it before and I think people love it. So first of all, I ask my kids, what's the date today? So I show them cards, show them cards, for example, some confusables. Can you write in the chat box? What's the, what's the date today? And do ask questions. I'm here to answer whichever you have. Yes, 21st. Then I just go and stick it on the board. Okay. And they love looking at me sticking things here off. This part is lost. I'm sorry. I didn't have time to find it. Let's do the weather. What, uh, what is the weather like where you are? In my country, at this moment, it's clear. It's clear. And it's dry. I don't like the weather at the moment. It's really not interesting. Ugh, it's boring. Okay, it's clear. And then this one is dry. Okay. And the final one, we can ask, what is the season? And we stick the season and I do the calendar with kids every single day. And this is how we learn months and all of the other things. So you can do a lot of things that are interactive outside of the screen. Mm, what do you think? Are there some things that you do? How would you organize some interactivity outside of the screen in your classroom? Drama. Mm -hmm. A lot of, I have them here, a lot of little puppets. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea. What else? Mm -hmm. Yes, using Realia in the classroom, flashcards, a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Finding the room, yes, get up, do some TPR, amazing, great ideas. And I started using another thing recently, and that's a nap. And this app is great because you can play scavenger hunts, yes. You can play sound effects. So whenever they do something great, I play a sound effect, for example. Yes, yeah, Simon says. I like playing uh, this app with sound effects. They love it. I'm going to send you a link. But before I send you a link, I just going to I just want to share one freebie with you. Yes, Alenka, you can you can find things according to the color and size. So when you go to this page, this is page 15. You can download some flashcards that I made from the online classroom. Just click here. And I made it specially for you today. And I think you will definitely like it. So these flashcards are for your online classroom. And when you print them out, you can show them to your little ones. You have signs like you're muted, look, listen, circle. Mm -hmm. Then you have be silent, wait, break out rooms, raise your hand. And these flashcards are big. So they are this big. <laughs> so if you print them out, you will definitely, um, definitely uh, have some fun in the classroom. You can find them. As uh, Vicky said, it will be available for download. Yes, your sister uses it, Glenda. Yes, I think it works amazingly. I can't wait to start using it. I made it last night and I really want to use it. To download the app, just go here kindergarten students as well. Mm -hmm. And I linked the app so you can download it as well later. 
Do you have something to ask? Anything that interests you? Please do. And also you can chat with me on my mm. website. I'm always mm. open for chatting. Hi, everybody. Well, there were lots of comments about the activities you were presenting. Great. <clears throat> and some people were asking about they had been using Jing, which has been discontinued. I think Chris asked that. Um, mm -hmm. And he was asking what we were using instead. Uh, mm -hmm. I have been using Screencast-O-Matic and uh, or awesome mm -hmm. screenshot too to capture mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. screens. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if anybody else has any other suggestions. This Jing was great. <laughs> I also use Jing all the time. <clears throat> I don't have any. As I said, I use I have a premium version mm -hmm. because my husband is a video editor, so I'm lucky there. But... Ah, that's a plus. <laughs> that's a plus. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Tiana. So if you have any questions about the ideas, about the tools, about other things that may relate to what Milika has been presenting today, uh, please type them in the chat. We have <clears throat> about seven minutes uh, mm -hmm. to discuss this. Okay, so while you're thinking, I can share some more free things that I prepared for you today. So this is the present sure, time. Go ahead. <laughs> So before I go to the free things, I just want to motivate you to start your Bitmoji classroom. It's really fun. You can make it in Google Slides, in PowerPoint or anything. Make yourself a Bitmoji and your students will love it. I see so, uh, so many activities and they just like clicking around. So maybe that's another way for you to get closer to them. Make this virtual classroom that looks like a real classroom. So do have fun, just download Bitmoji and make yourself and try. Thank you, everybody. Uh, we have a question, it's about Genially. Do you use the free version, Milika? Uh, no, I actually am a Genially ambassador, so I have everything. Access uh, to all the templates, yes. Yes. The premium templates too. Yes, but uh, <clears throat> Genially is not only about templates. So you know that you have this amazing functionality uh, mm -hmm. in all. Uh, yes, you can find Elizabeth the link for the Bitmoji classroom uh, here in the presentation. It's going to be here. I have two. I have one with uh, Halloween and one with a regular classroom. So you can click, click around. Yes, I know that many, many teachers have been making their Bitmoji classrooms mm -hmm. available on Google Slides, for example, mm -hmm. like a like a shareable yes, uh, but, uh, document. Um, yes, but yeah, I, I just very popular. <laughs> but I made all of all of my presentations in Genial because I just love it. So that one is not shareable. I'm sorry, but you can copy paste mm -hmm. all the pictures. You can click on right click and just copy mm -hmm. pictures to your presentation. So I'm sorry, maybe I, I should definitely oh. put them in Google Slides. Uh, the last thing, while you're thinking about questions, I just want to invite you to subscribe and share your email because I'm going to be hosting some free uh, webinars and I'm also going to share five free places for uh, one of my seven hour long, it's a very long program uh, in January and it's called Genially uh, Gamification Masterclass. So if you want to, to win one of the five free places, uh, you can enter your email here in this type form directly in Genially. And these five places are only for people who are present here today. So you have a very big chance in winning them. And that's all. If there are no questions, uh, if there are no questions, I'm going to close my eyes and I'm going to wait for you to share some feedback. In <laughs> <laughs> yes, I want to be surprised. Is it? Mm. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Chris says, TechSmith Capture is a product that replaces Jing. Uh, Vicky, do you have anything to say about this? I'm not familiar. Yeah, with... I mean, Jing was discontinued, but the same company produced a new product uh, to replace uh -huh. it. So that's uh -huh. the name of the product. Uh -huh. I haven't tried it yet, so. <clears throat> yeah, so <clears throat> sorry for, for not having information. I usually, I don't use those tools. 
where to register for Genially, please just go and type Genially.com and it's going to pop pop out on. Oh, yes, no, you I... mean on ah, mm. here. Mm. Mm. <laughs> uh, sorry, Vicky, for interrupting you. I put no, it's okay. Go ahead. The type form in the presentation. I think it's page 19. Just scroll. Can you can you can you can you put that link in the chat box so people can access and, and fill it in now mm -hmm. if they want? Mm -hmm. Just give me a second. I, I didn't think about it. I'm yeah, always... sure. <laughs> sure. For those of us, for those of you who want to try Genially, I have been using it with the free version and using the available mm -hmm. templates. Yeah. And it's really good. I mean, of course, if you want to pay for a premium uh, uh, feature, you can, but the free yes. version works really well. Yes, it works really well. I mean, mm -hmm. um, I, I started mm -hmm. collaborating with them because I met them on a conference mm -hmm. in Miami in person. So we actually talked and then I started working with them. But you don't need it. You can be a very good designer only with, as Vicky said, yeah. with I'm not an advocate for purchasing things when it comes to tools. I hope nobody hears me, but <laughs> so don't, <laughs> don't, don't spend your money. Okay, <laughs> this is. Okay, this super. Is, yes, thank you. Great, that's it. And don't forget to, to uh, download the flashcards. You just click around. You have some tasks to click around and find all the links, all the free stuff I put. So have fun. Okay, if nobody has any questions, I just want to uh, mm -hmm. see if you left any feedback, that would be great. Okay, and while you are doing that, I'm going to mm -hmm. tell you about our next webinar, which is going to happen on December 12th. And it's going to be about promoting and maximizing interaction digitally. And it will be delivered by Rafael Webster from Brazil. Uh, so uh, more details and uh, link to join in our blog, in our social media. So um, more details will be coming soon. Okay. We have a very fun question from Carla. She said, do you mm. see computers or apps replacing mm. teachers soon? What's your idea? No, 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 never. Mm. My idea is never. <laughs> uh, Vicky, what do you think? No, I mean, I'm totally there with you. I think that teachers are irreplaceable. And of course, there are, there are apps and there are technology developments that can make a teacher's life easier. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. And I'm all for that. But I think the human interaction, uh, teacher, student, uh, mm -hmm. is irreplaceable. Yes, definitely. So computer assisted learning, but not only with computers. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So we are very happy to have had you, Milika, and thank you to everybody who uh, came to our webinar today. Uh, wherever you are and whatever the time it is, uh, because you're all over the world. So uh, again, clap, clap for Milika. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Why am I <laughs> clapping for myself? <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> it's a reflex. <laughs> and uh, we hope to see you soon, December 12th, our next webinar. Um, thanks for coming. Goodbye. Goodbye.